Well, welcome to the course. Um, what I uh, am offering you as an introduction uh, to a course, which is after all uh, about uh, ethics in the media and certainly will um, focus on uh, the media, I mean, print, uh, radio, television, and of course, uh, the internet, digital, digital forms of media. Um, but uh, I thought that uh, getting some context for this sort of activity, which is a definitely a contexted activity, uh, critiquing uh, basically thinking about and critiquing how uh, forms of media shape us as human beings, especially um, thinking about how they shape uh, forms of thinking, our, the way that we think, and perhaps even uh, the way that we perceive. Uh, it's very, very ambitious arguments that Nicholas Carr presents in the last book that we read, The Shallows, um, that we may be even in a biological sense being reprogrammed, restructured, rewired by the kinds of media that we actually consume or use. That's what the course is about. I mean, it's about thinking about how changes in media change us, or maybe more to the point for your generation, how the forms of media that you take for granted form you as they have formed every previous generation. When I said that was contexted, uh, this sort of discussion, it certainly is. Uh, and the brief excerpts that I'm offering you uh, to take a look at in, in week one, I think establish a certain context, a very broad context uh, in the history of philosophy, uh, which was really a product of the 19th century and really a product of 19th century German philosophy, especially Hegel and Marx, who really initiated a kind of practice in philosophy for uh, analyzing, theorizing about how thinking, human consciousness, forms of consciousness, forms of thinking, in that very broad way that those, those, those were the very broad uh, feel that those terms uh, refer to how they change through history. Very radical thesis, but one which in a certain way has become, despite its continuing to be radical, has become almost commonplace with us, at least to a certain extent. Um, we are uh, used to living in a time of change, especially technological change. And that really is the story of the past 25 to 30 years uh, in the modern world uh, is thinking uh, a lot of thinking, a lot of consciousness about how technologies and especially computer technologies um, and especially the introduction of the internet into people's lives progressively from the early to the mid late 90s when it really became mainstream, how that's affected us in all sorts of ways. I, I think it's clear that it has. Now, what we need to think about is rigorously is just how we've been changed or are being changed or shaped by uh, forms of media. Um, certainly in America, the election of 2016 was a huge event in terms of maybe in a different way, indicating how our politics are irretrievably uh, now shaped by digital technology nothing like the 2016 election has ever occurred in, in America. Um, and it's a shock, you know, realizing that it's a, basically uh, hijacking people's Facebook feeds might have had a decisive effect on who was elected president of the United States. Quite a shock. Um, but, um, you know, again, uh, we're not exactly talking about that. That would perhaps be a different sort of course although those things are bound to come to mind, what we are concentrating more on rather than any particular set of events that might have occurred as a result of changes in uh, media technology or forms of uh, uh, information uh, dispersal, you might say, or disinformation dispersal in terms of the 2016 election. Thinking about how forms uh, of media 
shape us or perhaps do shape us, shape the way that we think and perceive the way that we write and speak, the way that we conceive of the world. This is something that does go back or, or has a history uh, in which really more or less has its origin in the 19th century with Hegel and with Marx. This is a little remark, very famous remark by uh, Hegel in introduction to a work called The Philosophy of Right, 1820. Very famous remark. Uh, when philosophy paints its gray on gray, one form of life has become old. And by means of gray, it cannot be rejuvenated, but only known. The owl of Minerva takes its flight only when the shades of night are gathering. Very poetic, very famous metaphor. Uh, the owl of Minerva, philosophy painting its gray on gray. This is just a stray remark, very famous one, but in a very large uh, philosophy, which I have no pretense to comprehend, you know, in any kind of legitimate way. Um, but I do think that I, I get the message there that human life, human consciousness changes, forms of life change, and, and philosophies, which is sort of trying to rationally comprehend the world, is constantly trying to catch up. And what it indicates at the very least is that uh, forms of thinking, forms of life, as he says, forms of human community, cultures, are in a constant state of well, it depends on how you think of it, either just pure change or one might say in a more Hegelian way, development. Uh, Hegel was the first thinker to comprehensively regard history as being meaningful. That is history, not just as the, uh, the, 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 the annals of the events that actually occurred, but, but history as having a rational structure the idea that, that history, the history of human beings is the development of thought and, and in a sort of typical enlightenment way, the development towards some sort of goal, ultimately the goal in any enlightenment way of thinking, the goal of the truly rational society, whatever that may be. Um, but just the very idea that, well, let's just say that uh, may freely speculate in ways that people who really know Hegel might find objectionable, but our ideals, our values, our notions of what is good, what is just, our notions of God, our notions of what it means to be a human being, uh, our notions of what is beautiful, our notions of what is decent and proper, that, that these are not uh, ideals that stay constant throughout history, but they're in a state of change. Again, one may say they're from, I would say, a Hegelian point of view, that they're in a, a state of change reaching towards some kind of absolute truth at the end, or in a more contemporary historicist or relativist way, for instance, you're reflected in this brief excerpt from Joseph Margolis, that that change is, is in no way ruled by any kind of transcendent ideal towards every to, towards which everything is reaching. That, that, that culture, thinking, human nature, uh, ideas, consciousness, that they change in a rather unpredictable way in which we cannot sort of set them in some sort of overall structure where it's sort of moving towards some absolute truth. Um, to argue those things would be sort of beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. What I'm really just trying to introduce you to are ways of thinking in philosophy that see or that believe that human consciousness, uh, human perception, human ways of conceiving of the world, along with our ideas and values, are shaped by history that is shaped by the changing conditions of human communal existence. Uh, and if it was Hegel who first really introduced, I suppose, the, the idea, uh, it was Marx who gave it its most influential form. And uh, I'll do another video where we take a look at this text. The German ideology where he introduces uh, what became known as historical materialism. So, uh, do another video.